All right then, so I wanna move away now from strings and numbers and onto two different types, arrays and slices. So we'll start with arrays, then go on to slices. So how do we create an array? How do we declare an array variable? Well, the same way as we would any other variable. So we'd say var, give it a name, ages, and if we want to explicitly type this, we can do using square brackets, first of all, to signify this is gonna be an array. Inside the square brackets, we see how many items are gonna be in the array, so the length, if you like. So if I want three items inside it, it's gonna be three. And then we say what type of data is gonna be inside the array. So this now says that ages will be an array of three items and they're all gonna be ints inside that array. So if we wanna give this a value, we can do, we set it equal to something. Now we also have to kind of put the typing on the right hand side of this expression as well. So this thing right here, we also have to put on the right before we actually create the array. And that might seem a little bit weird, but this is just the way we work in Go. And then the array itself is curly braces, not square brackets, curly braces. And then inside that I can add the items. So 20, 25, and 30. So these are all ints, and there's now three of these inside the array, as we say right here. Now, if I try to add in a fourth, then it's not gonna let me, you see this error, because we've gone out of the length of this declared length right here. So an array, unlike other programming languages you might be familiar with, like Python or JavaScript, has to be fixed length. We can't ever change the length of an array once it's been declared. It has to have a specific length. So we're gonna move on to something called slices later, which might feel a bit more like arrays as you're used to, where you can change the length. But for now, just know that an array in Go has a fixed length and it can't change. All right, so let me delete this. If I try to add a type in here instead of an integer, for example, a string, then it's not gonna let me do that either. All right, so these all have to be integers because we said right here, they're integers. All right then, so if we wanna do a shorthand, let me comment this out, we can do. And in fact, I'm just gonna copy this. And then down here, I'm gonna say var ages is equal to, and then just paste this in. So this is the same as this. So we don't have to type it on the left Go just infers the type automatically for us, okay? But we still have to do this on the right-hand side of this assignment. All right then, so let me down here print out the ages. I'm gonna say fmt.println, and then inside there, I'm gonna print out the ages. Now we can also print out the length of an array. And the way we do that is by using the built-in length method, or len. And then inside that, we pass in the array we want the length of. So we want the length of ages. So if I save this and run the file, then we should see the length and the array itself. So there's the array and there's the length, awesome. Let's do another example. And this time I'm gonna use the shorthand assignment. So I'm gonna say names is colon equal to, and this time it's gonna be square brackets, and inside that, I place a four to say there's gonna be four elements. They're gonna be of type string. And then inside the curly braces, we'll do some names. So Yoshi, and then Mario, and then Peach, and then Bowser. All right, so there's our names array. I'm gonna do the same thing as we did for ages. So let me duplicate this, type in names, and then names right here as well. And then I'm gonna run this file. And we can see right here the ages and also now the names and the length of names. Awesome, so that is arrays. And remember, the length is fixed. So now I wanna talk about slices. And slices are more like typical arrays from other languages where we can change the length, we can add items to it or we can take items away from it. So I'm gonna say right here, slices. And by the way, they use arrays under the hood, all right? So they still use the array type under the hood, but we can manipulate a slice a bit more. So what I'm gonna do is create a new slice called scores, and I'm gonna set it equal to square brackets, and then I'll say the type inside this slice. And then I'm gonna do curly braces, and then I'll just place in some integers, so 150 and 60. 
And notice this time I've not placed a number inside the square brackets. So when I don't do this, it creates a slice for me, not an array of fixed length. So it's pretty much the same other than that. We just don't put a number in here. So what if I want to change the value of one of these things? Well, I can do that. And in fact, let me go back to arrays because we can also change the values of arrays as well. If I say, for example, names, and then we want one, that's position one, and it starts at zero, zero, one. If I want to set that to be something else, I can. I can set it equal to Luigi. That's going to change this to Luigi. I can also do that for slices. So I can say scores and then position two. So that's zero, one, two, this one and I can set it equal to something else like 25. All right, now I can also now append items to this slice. I can't do that to an array, but I can to a slice. So if I want to append something, I say append, and then in parentheses, what slice I want to append to? Well, that is the scores one. And then what is the element I want to append to it? Well, I'll add on an 85. Now, this function right here doesn't actually change this scores variable. What it does is return a new slice for us. So if we want to update this with the new slice, we have to say scores is now equal to append scores 85. Does that make sense? Because automatically it doesn't append it. It just returns a new slice and then that new slice is being assigned to scores. So we're kind of overwriting this variable with a new slice. So now let's try printing this out. I'm going to say fmt dot print line, and we're going to print scores and the length of scores. So if I run this file now, then we should see, first of all, that this element has changed from Mario to Luigi. And we can see that right here. So we get Luigi instead of Mario. And then down here where we output the scores, we have that extra value 85 and the length, which is now four, not three as we first initialized it. All right. So that is slices and that is arrays. There's one more thing I want to talk about, and that is slice ranges. So a range is a way to get a range of elements from an existing array or slice and store them in a new slice. So what I'm going to do is say range one is colon equal to, and remember we use colon equal when we're first initializing a variable. We set that equal to names, and then in square brackets, I'm gonna say go from position one to three. Now what I'm gonna do is just print this out, fmt.print line, and I'm gonna output range one like so. Now if I come down here and I run this, we're gonna see this range, and it's Luigi and Peach. So if we take a look at this, remember we replaced position one with Luigi, which is why we get Luigi. So that's position one and that's where we're going from. So it includes position one up to position three. So one, two, three, but it doesn't include position three. So it just gets one, including this, two, three, but not including three. So we end up with these two right here, which is why we get them down here. All right, so it's inclusive of the first number, but not of the second. So let me do another range. I'm going to say range two, colon equal to names. And then this time I'm going to say go from position two, colon, and then just leave it at that. And what that does is say, okay, well, just go to the end of the array or the slice and get me everything up until the end. So let me output this right here, range two, and see what happens save it and run it and we can see we get peach and bowser so from position two so zero one two up until the end including the end one that's what this does all right so let me say now range three is colon equal to names and then this time it's going to be colon three so this but the opposite way around so this means go from the start and get me up to position three, but not including position three. So we'll say range three right here, just to see if this works. Spell this correctly and save it. So let's run the file. And now we can see Yoshi, Luigi and Peach. So from the very first position up to position three, because we don't include the third one. This is zero, one, two. We don't include the third one. All right. 
Cool. So that is ranges in a nutshell. And we can append these ranges as well because at the end of the day, they're just slices. So I can say range one is equal to append. And then we're going to take range one and append Cooper like so. And then we can just print this out. So I'm going to say FNT dot print line and then output range one. Like so, run this again, and we should see that range one now has Cooper at the end of it. All right. So there we go, my friends. That is arrays. The length of arrays cannot change, and slices, and the length of slices can change. And we can get ranges from existing arrays and store them in new slices. Now, most of the time, you'll probably use a slice instead of an array, but there might be times when you use these as well.